Hello everyone, Goresh here with a short tutorial for Age of Wonders 3 and how to use the XMLs to change unit descriptions. So I'm just going to go here and walk to the basics here. The first thing you're going to want to do is go and download the XML example from triumph.net. We've got the URL right here, um, which you can just go ahead and copy. I'll put that in the description below. And just go ahead and download that. And I've got an example right here. I'll just go ahead and pull it up real quick. This is basically what it looks like. Um, so just download that. That's what you're looking at. I'll get to that in one second, though. Um, next thing you want to do is go ahead and move it into the user content folder, which is under My Documents, My Games, Age of Wonders 3, User Content. And then under the folder where you're going to have your mod. And in my case, I've got the Variance mod, and I've already got it copied into there with the name changed. So that's how you get that into there. So once it's into there, you basically can go ahead and set up your descriptions by changing individual... Um, cells in the XML file. To do that, you're going to have to go and download LibreOffice or use uh, Microsoft Excel because OpenOffice won't work. It's not formatted correctly and it'll just like crash or not save. So you can go and download LibreOffice if you don't have Office. But if you do have Microsoft Office, go ahead and use that. So you'll need to download this and then download this and that'll get you started. Once they're downloaded, um, quick thing you have to know, you can't edit the XML file while the editor is open. So you have to set it up beforehand or make a list and go and edit it after. Anyway, so here's how it's set up. You can have the uh, name of the actual um, mod itself in there. You're going to want to put that to just whatever your mod name is because it makes it easier to search through. Then you have um, scene ID, text ID, speech, localization notes, miscellaneous notes, and then translations that are different languages. So scene ID is basically... Um, you can just put anything in there, to be honest. It's just make it something you can actually search for, because it'll make it easier to find whatever you're putting into there. Um, so, like, in my case, let me just jump over here and I'll show you mine real quick. Here's what I have. I have seen ideas for, like, units rogue, abilities, units druid, etc., etc. So, that's how that's set up. And then you have text ID, which you'll want to put for the name of the individual text cell. And then the actual text itself goes in the text slash speech column right here. So this, the reason it's set up like that is because you might have something like, you know, shard cannon name and shard cannon description, and those are the names right there, whereas the text itself can be much larger in the case of some of these things. Like, you know, it could be multiple lines for descriptions. Um, here's one right here that's like 20 lines in the actual game. So you generally want to keep your names short and concise, and then have the actual full text under here in text speech. So let's see, set that up. So let me just show you the overlay one more time. Text ID is the name of the individual ability or description, like ability name, ability description, etc., etc. Example scene is for the category, which is good for organizing and stuff like that. And then the actual text goes into text slash speech. Again, I'll show you my example right here. Um, I haven't converted all this stuff to French or Polish yet. Um, you don't have to put that in there, although you really should. Um, I think Tom was recommended using Google Translate. But I know a couple people in the forums might be willing to do translations if you can help them out or negotiate with them. So um, there may be a thread at some point down the road asking for translators and stuff like that. I might make one myself, to be honest. But just keep an eye on that right there. If not, just use Google Translate. Okay. So that's how you set up an XML file. Now let me go into the mod here real quick. So actual adding, actually adding the text to units and abilities is done through the units tab or the abilities tab. Um, Scroll down here on the Draconian Alchemist. You can see screen description and screen name. Let's go ahead and pop that open right there. And in this case, I've got the variance mod. So just type in variance, and it'll search for it. And then I'll go for units rogue. And then I'm in the same category right there, so I can just go ahead and grab the alchemist description. So we've got a Draconian Alchemist right here. That's the name. And then the alchemist description is right above it. So. Basically select that right there, pop it in, and there you go. Um, now the search isn't perfect, sometimes it's a little bit buggy, but you can just type in like uh, variants to get you that right there. You can type in, say, shard cannon right here, and that'll bring up the shard cannon description and name. It's sometimes a little wonky, it doesn't always work, but generally you can get a good category right there if you just you know, type in whatever you're looking for, it'll do a search like that. So, And it converts spaces to um, underscores and stuff like that, so it's pretty intuitive really. It's not... It's really not that hard, it's just one of those things where it's kind of tedious to set it up because you have to go and manually type in all these different things in the actual XML file to get it working. Which is kind of a pain, but you know, it is what it is. 
Um, for abilities themselves, same thing, it's just right under the actual ability itself. So scroll down here, we've got our description and our name, same thing as that. Um, one thing I do want to show you though, to make things easier, if you're designing a lot of abilities here, like, you know, me, I'm going through designing, you know, like uni units for every class, all these different abilities, it can rapidly become kind of a pain to jump between the editor and back to the XML file, and you can't edit the XML while you're in the editor. So that creates some problems. What I've found is the easiest way to do this is to, um, in your actual user content folder here, make a copy of the XML file and move it to another folder. Not like a subfolder in here, because it will search for all the subfolders within the uh, mod folder itself. But move it to like a folder on your desktop, or move it to something in my document, just something out of the way. And then open that up, and then as you're working in the editor, you can like have the thing open to the side and be editing as you go, working it like that, and just copy it back into the folder when you're done. You notice these little uh, lock files right here, that's because I have the variance, op the variance XML open in the working storage folder I have right here, whereas the mod itself, this one is not opened. So, just a quick little guide to do all that. Um, and it's, again, it's fairly intuitive once you have the example here. Just start changing things, leave the, this top thing right here the same, and just start changing these and copying them down and so on and so forth. Um, the one thing, other thing you need to do, do to remember though, is that you want to leave spaces between this, um, between this like the top thing and then the next thing and the next thing like that. You want to leave spaces between these headers right here. Once you have that set up though, you don't have to leave spaces anymore after that. You just have to leave them for the first, um, for the first row right there, and then another one for that one right there. Uh, now that being said, you're probably going to leave spaces between different categories like. I leave space between my rogue categories and my other class categories, and so on and so forth. But that's purely organizational, just, you know, a convenience thing. So, that's XML editing in a nutshell. It's pretty straightforward, it's just tedious to get set up. But, uh, I mean, yeah, just, yeah, go ahead if you need to, and download uh, LibreOffice right here. From LibreOffice.org, which I will post again in the description below. And the example XML file is on triumph.net slash data slash example.xml. So there you go. Pretty straightforward. Hope that help you guys out. Hope that hope that helps you guys out. I cannot talk today.